why hello and welcome everybody so today i wanted to go ahead and kind of give you guys my overall thoughts slash conclusions of uh playing melee a little bit this league now of course this is just my opinion with only one ascendancy which is jug and one skill which is bone shatter and this does not even necessarily mean that i built it correctly right i'm just gonna overall give my thoughts and opinion on it so as you guys know i'm mainly a caster player so we played to level 91 Honestly, we were... I only had two deaths on this character. My, my death sheet is going to show more, but we experimented with some stuff. The only two deaths I had was uh, to the Searing Exarch mini boss because I'm terrible at the fight with, like, Astral Avalanche that, like, one-tapped me. And then I had another death because I was trying to run a no-leech tier 16 map because um, I thought, oh, well, Jug gets a lot of recovery. That shouldn't be an issue. And then I forgot about Mono Leech because I'm an attack build, so that was another death. Other than that, though, it's honestly, like, really steamrolled most of the content. So I'm gonna go pop in a T14 Haunted Mansion, and I kind of want to tell you guys why I am stopping. So first off, right off the bat, I have to say, melee progression feels really good with Bone Shatter. Um, maybe the level, like, 1 through 28 doesn't feel super amazing, but once you get Bone Shatter at 28, you just delete stuff, like, right away you just slap um i've been doing content on a five link everything has been literally great the clear speed honestly for a melee build is a lot better than i imagined it would be the stun as a defensive layer feels really good and being able to play jug and actually do damage is something that i i didn't think would i would really have access to with like an ssf environment but i did so that was really cool um even up until, you know, a lot of people told me in red tier maps your damage is going to drop off. It really has not. I'll tell you what has dropped off, though. As this character is more of a stunner more than anything, right? So if you look at, like, my stun, I have 94% uh, threshold and 150%. I think that's 150? No, 165 stun duration. So I basically perma-stun pretty much everything that's not, like, a giga pinnacle boss. And this is what kind of leads me to why I don't really feel like playing this character anymore. So I tried like, um, I tried doing like, uh, just the mini bosses, right? So there was like the Eater of Worlds mini boss and the other one, and I could not stun them whatsoever. And the reason why I could not stun them, I'm pretty sure, is the lack, and I could totally be wrong here, maybe I'm just flat out incorrect, but I believe it's because I don't have enough reduced stun threshold um, or something like enough sources of double damage, enough sources of double stun, etc. Um, but what sucks about that is, uh, it's just kind of annoying playing melee for bossing. Uh, I'm used to playing a caster where, you know, I have righteous fire and I throw a fire trap and I run in a circle. Melee is a lot more, and don't get me wrong, it does feel rewarding. It's not like it's just it's just clunky it, it's just a lot more work so for example i'm bonking my boss i'm making sure he's stunned i'm using my divine blessing pride right while bonking him while he's stunned i try to pay attention to my rage if i notice i'm at 50 to 60 rage i pop berserk you don't want to pop berserk during a phase because if you pop berserk during a phase boss you're going to lose all your stacks of berserk uh you know your war chief totem or your ancestral protector totem is probably going to die you need to recast that don't forget your blood rage if you want to go a little extra try hard you've got a focus button you've also got the option of doing a like a double like a single war chief totem with a a single protector but here you go you can see the stun lock here it works out really really well and this is like a t14 map boss right t14 map boss on a five link so um for me to push forward further and again like i was saying i very well may, may be incorrect on this an anomalous bone shatter would give me like another 20 percent i think maybe like 15 20 percent reduced enemy stun threshold then pair that with an ashes of the stars and then get a six link and i'm pretty sure you're back to stun locking pretty much all the content in the game but i just did not really enjoy the the bossing aspect i guess you could say of melee i really like the map clear the map clear is is honestly really nice because it's it doesn't feel like it's restricted behind explodey or you need a six link where you need you know this much accuracy to feel good like the character's really tanky has a great defensive layer of jug and stun locking everything it was very satisfying to map clear with but there is another problem with map clear um my other problem is i hate rolling rare maps on this build and i'm just going to show some of the mods 
that don't necessarily brick the build but can be super annoying and there's more i'm just highlighting what i popped up so uh cannot leech means you don't get mono leech which means you need to run a mono flask or some other form so i can't really run this which sucks because slayer can't really run this either to my knowledge and slayer does get to run two extra map mods maybe three extra map mods that uh jug potentially has issues with and if you're in a trade league or you have a lot more experience with melee than me a lot of this stuff may not apply to you but this is more so looking at like a beginner's point of view to accessing melee for the first time right more specifically my opinion i don't want to speak for everybody right um so reflect obviously you know i'm playing it on hit build reflect requires a swap that's to be fair most builds have that right uh, i can't run even with 50 percent reduced i have to like fully be immune to it uh reduced effective auras normally reduced effective auras um is not too big of a deal unless you're relying on like you know your purity for like max res or purity of elements for total res in this instance it's a really weird interaction where if i run reduced effective auras it basically screws my precision which then pulls my accuracy down below my max health which causes me to deal 40 percent less damage um so that really bites you in the ass the same thing could be said for blind but thankfully uh we do have soul of garu khan here so we are immune to blind so that is you know that's at least really nice um yeah so reduced accuracy is a literal mod that rolls on maps that is 40 percent less damage enfeeble reduces your damage while lowering your accuracy so unless you know you're permanently fast flask immune or balance it to have enough um balance it to have enough uh reduced effective curses this really screws you over um unwavering is a mod that literally makes monsters stun immune this actually pops up in maps as well as just a regular mod but you don't really it doesn't really prov like prove to be much of an issue the only time unwavering is actually a problem and again right now i am not referring to the map mod this is referring to the map mod mobs can literally just have unwavering is if you have an essence mob who has unwavering or a beast mod who has unwavering then it can be annoying but for the most part it's really just a map mod and like betrayal but betrayal you can just face tank so this is really just for the map mod um reduced recovery reduced recovery kind of sucks because jug is all about like his recovery right when i hit with bone shatter i can spike my life regen to like over 2000 reduced recovery dicks that so that really hurts my overall net regeneration no regen obviously you know i can run it because i have leech but it's just annoying it, it again totally runnable it's just really really annoying to run um and i came into this situation where i just recently did like an ssf playthrough of my rf and granted you know it is not a fair comparison i have so much more knowledge on that style of build compared to this but i will say that this character this yet. blasted through map content like i as a guy who plays righteous fire i am not used to builds being able to just like enter a map and immediately feel like a god like righteous fire has this righteous fire inquisitor has this great over sustain build but you don't have nearly as much mitigation as say this character without any influence gear without anything really you're just you're just so thick um so for that reason i do have to say i really enjoyed my playthrough my short playthrough of this character and if i do revisit melee again it will probably be another bone shatter build probably next league uh, and i'll try to like intentionally um make it so i'm not going to be annoyed by so many map mods with my style of build that i play anyway that's pretty much about it so uh sorry to cut the series short i uh, hope this video helped some guys out for you know for people who want to try melee out uh before i stop i just do want to go over my gear really fast since it was kind of short so this is a weapon that we harvest crafted um this was harvest crafted via reforge speed i was doing reforge speed reforge fizz and i think reforge attack but usually reforge attack was saved for my helmet and my gloves to secure like basically mainly my helmet to secure an accuracy roll this is a shitty accuracy roll here i have a whole set of new gear but um it's kind of an ass to gear into spell suppression uh that's not a melee issue that's like an iq issue on my part so um yeah we're using endurance charge on melee stun bone shatter brutality melee physical and ruthless i think my six link might be fortify never really figured out exactly what my six link would be um next i've got war banner maim ancestral protector and precision in my helmet um again the war banner is for accuracy and for increased fizz 
Uh, the maim is on the protector totem to make them take increased fizz. The protector totem is to get myself more stacks of uh, trauma from the actual bone shatter so that uh, my damage basically ramps. Precision is used to buff our accuracy above our maximum life pool to enable precise technique. Now, I also did not even get to put influence stuff on my gear. I know my build could be quite a bit better influencing my gear. Um, so like to take it over to my gloves, I have Divine Blessing, Pride, Life Tap, Ancestral Cry. What I wanted to do here was get plus one strike and then completely chop. And I don't know if this would hurt my clear a lot. Uh, the attack mastery here with the 30% further range, drop all of Tribal Fury, drop these three travel points, gut Golem's Blood, drop two hand mastery, drop all of Wrecking Ball, call all of this instead um stack more life over here grab berserking because it's really good attack speed and rage is like pretty much always permanently capped uh except for like your first minute in a map um and then i forgot oh yeah and then i would have to go back into kinetic impacts for basically the reduced enemy stun threshold and i don't remember exactly where i was gonna go i think uh with the extra points i would start filling in spell suppression Again, I don't remember if that's what I should do. That's felt that it's kind of like what I wanted to do uh, with the character. What else is there? Um, yeah, so my belt, we've got reduced enemy stun threshold on a Stygian vice uh, with just, you know, res crafted life. Again, for your gloves and your helmet, even your amulet, you really want to try to secure an accuracy roll. I didn't have that high of accuracy rolls in my gear, which is why I was lacking a bit. Um, Death's Rush because very good Chaos Res, Onslaught, Armor, Accuracy, Leech. Just a very good ring. Uh, chess Piece didn't have anything super special on it. It was basically just life, life regen. Not even life regen, just life and armor. Physical damage reduction, very basic. Was trying to gear into a Spell Suppression piece. Um, here's my other ring. Nothing really too fancy on it. Uh, I did want to try to get a reduced effective shock to get 100% reduced effective shock, but never even ended up dying to a shock issue, so did not really didn't really mind um amulet just life res life regen nothing special uh boots same thing pretty sure i got these yeah i got these really early on never even ended up replacing them uh and then my flasks are really basic i didn't really do a good job here but uh granite with attack speed quicksilver with armor uh quartz with reduced effective shock oh that's why i never take shock okay never mind i perfect never mind then uh and then i guess i have this which is just a jade flask so you know flasked up or 46,000 armor 3k evasion i really wanted to boost this evasion up much higher i just didn't play long enough to like scale my evasion rating um and to do that you could take like i guess if i'm respecking cloth and chain i wouldn't have it here but i do technically have the option of going one two three four right grabbing reflexes which is evasion spell suppression sentinel which is evasion spell suppression not spell suppression sorry just evasion and then potentially specking into duration because it's kind of like a multiplier if you can keep up your bone shatter stacks but i don't know if that's actually worth it and then for clutch gearing i could take mage bane if i need the extra suppression and then like respec out of it so i like that there was some flexibility definitely with where i go um just you know it fell short for me for bossing with not being able to stun things and to be fair if you could easily stun pinnacle bosses it would be kind of like ridiculous so it is kind of nice that you have to work for it it was just a little bit too much work for me right now after playing poe so much this league already but anyway that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you guys like the video please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box take care see you guys all tomorrow